Hi ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name's Ian Walton and I'm here to present Colour in Your Life in the UK. We all know an artist or creative individual out there, often a family member or a best friend. So come along with us on this wonderful adventure of inspiration, creativity and positivity to meet and watch some of the most talented and creative people in the country. And let us put some colour in your life. Hi ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, welcome to Colour in Your Life UK. And we're up in Scotland today, uh, just uh, northeast of Glasgow, about 20 minutes or so, in a place called Lindsay, and we're here to meet the amazing Scott Naismith. Scott, it's wonderful to meet you, mate. Great to have you here, Ian, and the whole Colour in Your Life team. Uh, just come up from Wales to Scotland here, and it's been a drich day, but I'd, I'd pleased to say that the sun's out. And you're going to, drink by the way, as a, as a Scottish word, then you're going to hear some more Scottish words probably in the episode. It means it's grey and the, the rain's coming down. But the sun's out now in that transitional period when you've got dark, heavy weather, turning to light is what I use for the sort of metaphor for optimism and hope and a kind of positivity uh, to these colourful paintings. So hopefully we'll get that across today and uh, have some fun creating kind of two paintings I'm going to be working on, possibly a third, I don't know. Uh, but we'll see how it goes, yeah. No, that's, good. that's wonderful. And I, I think we're going to see some amazing work today, Scott. You know, I've, I've looked at your work for some time now, okay. and it really is. It's so vibrant and so, it's, there's so Thank much you. colour. It's perfect for colour in your life. Yeah, it's so all about colour, yeah. You, you're going to really enjoy what you see today, folks. So Cheers. we'll let's let him get on with it. Let's go. <laughs> so we've got the colours laid out here. I must stress that these are all artist soils. Um, I like Michael Harding. Uh, they are just good for their consistency and their, their pigment pigment strength. Um, but I do use student grade oils as well. But on the on my palette, uh, my studio palette that I'm using will all be artist grade. Um, uh, the, I use a lot of paint and when I'm using big quantity of paint I'm using the student oils but they'll always be finished over the top um, in the artist's oils. So starting with, I, I start round about the cyans or the aquamarines. It's also got King's Blue just near the blues, that's in the wrong place. And then cyan. So even though I've got a lot of colour here, I'm using a lot of tubes of paint it's really anchored in the concept that the primary colours are cyan, magenta and yellow. I believe that the, the truth about uh, the primary colours is cyan and magenta. And that's why this magenta is a colour. Uh, somebody suggested that I might be called the magenta man. Wasn't yeah, that right, I think, I think uh, that's right, yeah. 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 It's, it's interesting uh, just how much magenta paint, uh, Scott, you managed to get on your hands earlier. Yeah. With me, it's Prussian blue. So yeah, the, yeah, the colour wheel theory is, uh, is something that you, you're very keen on and uh, as you say, that, that video yeah. has uh, seen a lot of hits on, uh, on YouTube. People, and I get a lot of people saying, you know, this has changed, this has changed the way I think about painting. Um, and it's not about, there's, there's no real importance of a colour wheel if you're working purely on instinct. Uh, but it's a, it's the, the best way to learn is to know uh, the, the right places uh, to be thinking about mixing colour. Which titanium white is a fantastic, fantastic paint, but it's the most used and abused paint tube that all artists uh, get kind of obsessed with. The most, the greatest feeling when you're painting is putting in that highlight, you know, just getting in those highlights and people get carried away. The highlights are so essential and you need to, less is more, less is more. So. Although titanium white is a massively important colour, you need to watch how much you use of it. And when I mix the, the colours with white to get lighter colour, I use this stuff and it's zinc white and it's, it's just, it's lighter on the paints. So you don't get that chalky feel. Uh, I'm all about the high, high saturation colour, high key colour and uh, to remain vibrant you've got to you've got to try not to get that chalky feel a lot of people when they see my exhibition i expect them to say oh well the, the biggest thing that hits them is color but actually some people say do you know what it's the texture sometimes when you're viewing painting online or it's or it's a picture of a painting you don't really appreciate the textures people really comment when they see the pictures in real life uh, they do comment on the texture and a lot of that is created 
through the use of thickened paint and I do that by absorbing a lot of the oils. That doesn't happen on this palette, it happens on a cardboard palette and you've got to watch how long you leave paint on a cardboard palette or anything absorbing the oil. You don't want to absorb too much of the oil there because that binding the paint together. Okay, I do work mixed media, so it's acrylic for the underpainting a lot of the time, not all the time. To explain here, I have one with the acrylic underpainting done. And there's actually one here which is oil on linen, which is purely oil on linen. If I'm looking for heavy texture to work on top of, I'm working with acrylic paint to start me off. And I love to contrast the different ways that acrylic paint can actually behave as opposed to oil. And then one of my favorite quotes is from Matisse, one of my biggest influences is Matisse, uh, who's big on color, is I don't paint things, I paint the difference between things. And I'm actually keeping in mind the difference between the mediums that I'm using. Uh, I want people to look at the painting and wonder where the acrylic paint stops and the oil paint starts. If they don't know, I've done my job well. So I've got three different palettes and the, the unique thing with these palettes is that when they get a little bit dirty, unlike that one uh, from the oil painting, uh, it might get framed, uh, but this stuff just peels off and uh, you can just clean the palette. You get too much paint on and uh, you can just take that and bin it. So we're gonna work on this stuff. We're gonna work on three clean ones just now and I've got my three primary colors. So all I'm gonna work with with this underpainting is just the three primary colors and it's just kind of something that I've been known for because I'm peddling this idea that cyan, magenta, yellow are the primary colors and I'll use these uh, only. Uh, possibly one of my most well-known paintings is Primary Sky and I created that almost totally from three colours uh, and I've actually put it on the front of my book uh, Scottish Skies. It's possibly my most well-known painting. I think on Pinterest it's not long before you come across Primary Sky on Pinterest. People seem to tend to pin it everywhere. Right Scott, this is looking uh, far more exciting now. We're down on the floor with sheets of cardboard and lots of paint and and uh, I can see you've got a tablet there and buckets and so on and so forth. This is looking really exciting. Yeah, yeah, Ian, we're getting a bit down and dirty here, I think. But um, uh, before we do that, we need to get rid of, of the tablet. Yeah, just working on uh, my new toy, really. And, uh, you know, working on the, the drawing, the initial drawing. This is Callanish Standing Stones in, in, in uh, the Isle of Lewis. And it's uh, working out the composition, just working out where the, the main elements are and the mood of it and the direction of the marks of the sky. That's all I really need it for, but it will remain there as a reference. And mostly at the start of the painting, I'm just thinking about where the horizon is, where's, this, where's the sky going to occur and where the colour's going to go and where the main, uh, the main areas of drama needed. So let's get right in about it with our large palette knife. A little bit of uh, white on the canvas here is going to mark out uh, where my horizon level is and this is just a case of getting straight in and about it <laughs> yeah so fair dude mate I don't think I've uh, I don't think I've actually seen a, uh, a palette knife as big as that before except I don't uh, muck about it. now you were saying that well that's a lot of paint but I've actually not squeezed out enough so <laughs> probably <laughs> that's always the way yeah Now at any point that I'm working here, I can re-wet canvas in it. A lot of this color is going to drip down and that's going to be absolutely fine. That's what we're looking for because I'm looking to describe the differences between solid and liquid paint. So at any stage I can, I can be softening and I can be hardening edges. Yeah, it's something I love doing myself is working on big canvases with big brushes. You can, you can get so much done in such a short space of time. And, yeah. and often, uh, you know, people look at small pieces of work and think, well, you know, that's really nice, but it's not very big. So, you know, it won't be very expensive and you can often spend far, far more time on a, on a small canvas than you, you do on, on something of this sort of size. Uh, I'm a big believer that you set it down 
You set down the paint and then you manipulate it afterwards. I love the idea of organised chaos. That difference between things again, it's like taking something chaotic and making sense of it. So a lot of the time in the start is like getting the paint down. Most, most of the important thing is getting that paint down, getting the paint down and then manipulating it. So I've got, I'm making a statement with this and I'm refining it with this almost at this stage. And a lot of the latter stages are about refining. And, but if you don't have the energy, you've got nothing to refine. Now at this stage, I'm gonna switch colors, but I'm gonna keep the, keep the knife, knife fairly dirty just now because it's gonna move the hue slightly towards purple. And this is thalo blue, so I'm hitting, hitting this with some severe sort of thalo blue at this stage. A lot, of, a lot of people have seen YouTube videos of me working and, and they say, oh, you're constantly squinting. I think every painter does squint all the time. It's like, you must have like, you, by the time you're older in life, you've got all the wrinkles everywhere in your eyes. You completely. Your life, like, yeah, you know. I completely and agree. And it's purely, you know, you, I can't do without it. It's just judging it without looking at the details. It's almost like just putting on a, a kind of pair of glasses to fog everything out so that you don't get bogged down in any kind of detail, you're just judging the larger shapes and the larger areas of colour. It's really good to hear another artist saying exactly the same thing. I, I, you know, I'm conscious that, that I squint when I walk away from work to look at it and I'm half closing my eyes, I'm, I'm closing one eye and so on. And people look at you and think, what on earth, you know, why are you doing that? So it's, yeah. it's quite nice to, uh, to hear another artist saying exactly the same thing. A lot of it is about the power of the paint itself and what the paint is doing. You've got to look like you meant it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's all about confidence. Yeah. You can't... Sometimes a confident mark is better than an accurate one, you know? It's about um, an energy and, and a belief. Uh, if you do something with belief and energy, people buy into, sort of buy into the idea that you're trying to, to get across, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you, you know, you can see the passion in the work and the integrity in the work, and I think, uh, I think people do really respond to that. And you'll see how they, these initial marks, you know, these initial marks, and and you know, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot. Of, there's no under under drawing. The drawing comes back into a later stage. Uh, I feel that too much reference material, too much looking at that reference material, uh, becomes your ball and chain. It prevents you from from uh, sort of creating uh, something that isn't on that reference material and what isn't on your reference material is of, of, often the most important part of the painting. Yeah I think I'm definitely going to go away from uh, from here today with some ideas that uh, that I'd like to work with with the with the colors that you're using. Um, I promise I won't uh, I won't copy any though I think uh, <laughs> you've got a you've got a little bit of that kind of thing going on I believe. Yeah, you know, influence and influence. You're always going to have that, especially when it's a, it's a kind of newer idea of how to approach color. But um, I always think you've got to combine influences. You know, at least two influences. You come up with something new. I think creating art is all about creating something different. And I think I always think it's a shame if you if you are uh, too led by one thing. Uh, it can it can limit what you put into something. So, yeah, uh, I've been known for doing YouTube videos of demonstrations and things like that. Uh, but what I've always suggested is, it's uh, I, I try not to make it a, a step by step thing. Uh, you know what comes next? What comes next? You know, uh, if you know the rules, you know how to bend the rules. I'm bending so many rules with what I do. But if you don't understand the rules to begin with, you'll tie yourself in knots. One of the biggest rules is there's no rules. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. It? I was just about to say, you know, you know, rules are made for the obeyance of fools and the guidance of wise exactly. men. I'm not sure who it was that said it, but, you know, it's quite true. If you're a bearer of the rules, you're not an artist, I suppose. <laughs> a lot of these colours really don't uh, move in hue at the start. And what I mean by that, there's the, the, all the mixing is done on the, on the canvas really here at this stage, but... Um, I'm not worried about that at the moment. There's nothing worse than a painting that just doesn't move 
in hue much. It does, it, it, you know, if you use too much of one hue and don't shift it anywhere, uh, you, bore, you bore the viewer senseless, you know, with, with the same kind of colour. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm using the same kind of colour, but uh, it's only an underpainting and it's only the base layer which will then be manipulated on top. And hopefully we'll just get into some oil painting on the first painting to show you how that happens. So we're getting to the stage now where I'm kind of happy with the amount of drips, the amount of movement of paint and the amount uh, that the, the elements are, are affecting each other. Uh, we're starting to cover each other. I've got to quite like the amount of bare canvas that's shining through. So I'm now going to, as soon as I turn this to be on the level, it's going to stop these drips moving anywhere. So I've got to be happy with where the drips have gone. And again, the drips will be a lot more subtle by the final piece. Um, then I can start manipulating the wet paint that's down and you'll see how I do that on the level, on the flat. Okay, this stage is down on the flat. I'm, I'm happy with where these drips are going, but I'm gonna add another uh, element that makes reference to the, the liquidization of something solid moving to liquid. And before this is dry, it's, it's maybe just tacky, wet. I'll start to just pick out areas to, to wet again. So this wetness is going to eat into that paint that isn't quite dry yet. And it's going to create a reference to that liquid that I'm looking for. And at the same time, I can start to refine some of the areas that are beginning to dry and it will be, there'll be much more control to it. So I'm controlling all this chaos. I'm creating the, the chaos and then I'll control it. But I think we're just about ready to, to leave the acrylic stage. I, I would really only be working underpainting. Again, this is nowhere near the finished painting, but actually a lot of this energy is going to be apparent by the end of the painting. And uh, the combination of different layers working together is what I'm all about. So the next layer that we're going to work on on the other painting, because this one will still be wet, is going to be about emphasizing what's good and what needs covered up. Okay, so first stage of oil paint on top of acrylic, I tend to just, um, it's, qu it's quite a matte finish that's on it just now, and uh, I'm using a, a medium to oil out. And it's literally just coating this acrylic. Yes, so we're pretty much ready to get some paint on this, yeah, so some, some more colour. And again, we're going to start, and like, I'm, I'm going to start with just the, the basic colours that, uh, that I I'm known for the cyan, magenta and yellow, but what I want to, I want to establish very early on uh, a, a real feel of light. Um, so I just go in and, and, and what's called a glaze across and I, I'm using that oil that's on the canvas, you know, and uh, to move the paint around and immediately we'll get an idea. Now I'm losing, I'm losing the white of the canvas, but I can then paint opaque white on top later on. So it starts to change very quickly at this stage and, and I, all I'm doing is refining the colour and, and all I'm thinking about is atmosphere. There's going to be a bit of drawing that needs to come back into this, back into this, a bit of drawing needs to start into this because there's basically no drawing involved in it. Uh, but the basic shapes are there, but those shapes need to be refined because they're not accurate. Uh, they're not really accurate, but they probably never will be accurate because accuracy is not as important as confidence. <laughs> <laughs> so Scott, obviously you're very drawn to the west coast of Scotland, which is perfectly understandable. Um, one of the paintings that I, that I particularly like was Apple Cross Pass. Yeah. Uh, I wonder whether you might want to share a little bit more information on that one. Yeah, first of all, I mean, I called it Apple Cross Pass. It's actually Bilach Naba. But the title in that painting, Applecross Pass, was uh, for the benefit of those that are unfamiliar with uh, the kind of Gaelic uh, origins of these places. Well, the Balak Naba uh, near Applecross is, is, is this extraordinarily high uh, ascent that uh, goes up as if you're going up the Alps in, in France or something. Um, but it was, uh, you know, any petrol heads love it, any cyclists love it. Uh, and the views from the top are incredible. But um, Scotland's got this idea that you've got this uh, Route 66 version in Scotland, which is uh, the North Coast 500. 
in the North Coast 500 is this idea that you've got these roads that connect across the Highlands of Scotland. And that's one of the highlights for me. Um, what you get is these beautiful views from uh, the top to Rassey, Sky and Rum, the Isle of Rum's just behind. So that's what you see in that. I've also painted a painting called Rum, Sky and Rassey, um, and I've also painted uh, many images of Sky from Rassey. Yeah, Sky's obviously a, a real passion for you and, and, and <coughs> me as well. I mean, it, it really is a beautiful island. There's a, there's a yeah. lot of variety there and the Coolin Ridge is just uh, absolutely magnificent. Um, you, you, you've got a, another terrific painting called Rassey Road. Um, yeah. And I, I've driven that road, you know, and it, it, it's, it's, it really is breathtaking. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that, there's a story behind that road and it's, it's, it's called Callum's Road, built by one guy. And uh, it's like the only road in Rassey, just about, it just goes up. Rassey's a very small island, but th because of its positioning, you get to see the Coolins at their best, really, where, where you, you get to see all the different parts of Skye. Skye's, Skye's a very uh, varied island. It's, there's so much going on in it. You've got the hills, you've got, the, you've got the, they call them the wings of Skye, the, the peninsulas that reach out from the central sort of hills. And for an artist, there's just so much, uh, it's so varied. So Scott, it's been fantastic to come up and, and meet you here. You, you know, you've got a fabulous studio right next to your house. I know it's it's all brand new, and you've not you've not been here very long. And it's it's terrific. Obviously, that you, you're able to be next to the family as well. Yeah, no, it's so important. It's uh, I've always worked from a home studio, uh, but we've re only recently moved to this this part, of, and you know, I've got purpose built, detached place to work, and it's got a it's got second floor as well. So the the, the floor upstairs is is Jill's uh, 40, so she is behind the scenes doing a lot of the uh, website work and all the, the organisation of it, keeping me on a straight and narrow, and I've got the kids next door. Everything's contained, so Aaron and Sophie are also good artists themselves. Uh, they're six and four, and yeah. uh, you know, the artists of the future, maybe. It's in the yeah. family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. And it, it's they, wonderful. They feature, yeah. they feature on my YouTube channel, actually. <laughs> you can see them outside in the back garden of my old house, just painting away. I think the freedom, the freedom in such a young girl, I mean, so I think Aaron was three when I first filmed him, and the freedom that comes with the naivety is, you know, a lot of adult artists can, can learn from that. I think it was Picasso that said, what did he say? He said, we're all born artists, we all just got to work yeah, out yeah. how to stay that way. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a wonderful quote, isn't it? Yeah. So well, true. the weather was dreek this morning, as you said. Dreek it was, yes. And was uh, the weather's changed quite considerably, so I hope that we're going to get uh, we're going to get some closing shots. Uh, Light from darkness outside uh, with a view of the Campsie Fells, which uh, yeah, that'll be wonderful. But well, it's, it's been absolutely terrific. Fantastic to have you on the yeah, show here, yeah. and uh, you know, colour in your life. We've got some colour here, and I'm looking forward to seeing some of the other artists that you feature on this show. Thanks so much. Well, we've had an absolutely awesome day here today with uh, with Scott Naismith. And Scott, I just want to thank you, mate. It's been no, absolutely right. fantastic. Right. And you've created some wonderful work here today. Thank you. Where can we find Scott Naismith's work? Right here, right here near Glasgow in Lindsay. No, uh, as well as this show here, I'm on YouTube as well. YouTube.com slash Scott Naismith and scottnaismith.com. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the rest of that stuff, which I'm sure is very much like colour in your life as well. Absolutely. You know, don't forget, folks, we're out there on Facebook, we're out there on YouTube, and if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And you can find the website, which is colourinyourlife.com.au. We've had a fantastic day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, put some colour in your life.